I want to introduce you guys to my favorite book. Now, I'm not the most prolific reader or anything, so I'm sure that better books are out there, but in my experience, this is definitely my favorite. So, I recommend checking it out. It's called The Importance of Living by Lin Yutang. Yeah, so it was written by Lin Yutang, who's a Chinese author that was born around the turn of the 20th century. He kind of conjures up this image of like wise old Chinese sage sitting on a mountain top, smoking a pipe and stroking his epic beard, you know. <laughs> Actually, it's not too far off from that. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> I mean, really, he's just missing the beard. If I was looking to live on a mountaintop, I would definitely bring my lazy boy and my encyclopedia. You never know when you're gonna need need to look up some some obscure thing. It's kind of hard to explain what the book is about. Basically, it's just his philosophy of life and what he's learned and kind of his attitude that he takes towards living. You know that quote that says, "Happiness is not in having what you want." but in wanting what you have. Well, basically, this book teaches you how to do that. I mean, he's really made peace with the world as it is. He really has an appreciation for the little things, which I really aspire to. And it's not just about appreciating like the physical things that you own and you have, um, but also appreciating the human condition that we find ourselves in, and, and not like wishing it was like some other way or wishing you were someone else or something but just kind of being content in, in who you are and being content in how the world works but I mean the topics he talks about are pretty eclectic let me let me give you an idea by by reading some of the uh, some of the chapter headings on having a stomach on being wayward and incalculable the importance of loafing on growing old gracefully on lying in bed, on tea and friendship, on drink and wine games, on flowers and flower arrangements. That's getting a little obscure, but I mean, what's cool about the book is it's kind of an essay form, so you can just jump around, you know, go through the table of contents. Something sounds interesting, give it a give it a read. All right, so I want to read a passage from the book. This essay is called Human Life, a Poem. But it's not actually a poem, it's an essay. So, yeah. I think that from a biological standpoint, human life almost reads like a poem. It has its own rhythm and beat, its internal cycles of growth and decay. It begins with innocent childhood, followed by awkward adolescence, trying awkwardly to adapt itself to mature society with its young passions and follies, its ideals and ambitions. Then it reaches a manhood of intense activities, profiting from experience and learning more about society and human nature. At middle age, there's a slight easing of tension, a mellowing of character, like the ripening of fruit or the mellowing of good wine, and the gradual acquiring of a more tolerant, more cynical, and at the same time, kindlier view of life. Then, in the sunset of our life, the endocrine glands decrease their activity, and if we have a true philosophy of old age, and have ordered our life pattern according to it, it is for us the age of peace and security and leisure and contentment. Finally, life flickers out, and one goes into eternal sleep, never to wake up again. One should be able to sense the beauty of this rhythm of life to appreciate, as we do in grand symphonies, its main theme, its strains of conflict, and the final resolution. The movements of these cycles are very much the same in a normal life, but the music must be provided by the individual himself. In some souls, the discordant note becomes harsher and harsher, and finally overwhelms or submerges the main melody. Sometimes the discordant note gains so much power that the music can no longer go on and the individual shoots himself with a pistol or jumps off a bridge. But that's because his original leitmotif 
had been hopelessly overshadowed through the lack of good self-education. Otherwise, the normal human life runs to its normal end in a kind of dignified movement and procession. There are sometimes in many of us too many staccatos or impetuosos, and because the tempo is wrong, the music is not pleasing to the ear. We might have more of the grand rhythm and majestic tempo of the Ganges, flowing slowly and eternally into the sea. No one can say that a life with childhood, manhood, and old age is not a beautiful arrangement. The day has its morning, noon, and sunset, and the year has its seasons, and it is good that it is so. There is no good or bad in life except what is good according to its own season. And if we take this biological view of life and try to live according to the seasons, no one but a conceited fool or an impossible idealist can deny that human life can be lived like a poem. Shakespeare has expressed this idea more graphically in his passage about the seven stages of life, and a good many Chinese writers have said about the same thing. It's curious that Shakespeare was never very religious, or very much concerned with religion. I think this was his greatness. He took human life largely as it was, and intruded himself as little upon the general scheme of things as he did upon the characters of his plays. Shakespeare was like nature herself, and that is the greatest compliment we can pay to any writer or thinker. He merely lived, observed life, and went away. Alright, so let that percolate through your gray matter, and then let me know what you think. Share, share your thoughts below, and if you want to hear more, Check out the book. Got a link in the description. See you next time.